Good morning, everybody. Afternoon. It's actually afternoon. Um, I was going to make one of my favorite quickie meals. I grew up on this stuff. Yes, I have stuff sitting over here I need to put away. Excuse my mess. I have 11 jars of my dandelion jelly half pints that I've canned. Oh my god, that stuff is wonderful. We are making a white sauce gravy. Um, today I'm making what is commonly known as shit on a shingle. Um, I'm using the, uh, it's the, um, beef. It's, this brand is the Buttig, 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 whatever. Anyways, this is what I'm using. I'm just going to tear it up into little bitty pieces, throw it in here when I'm almost done. I'm using, um... It's one stick of real butter. I know there's people that use shortening. My mother used shortening when she made it. I know there's people that will use hamburger and use the hamburger grease sausage. Use the sausage grease. That's great. It makes it taste much better. But I don't have none of those things. I'm making... Uh, basically, it's chip beef. But it's not dried in a jar. Yes, I have a... I turn on my other light. I have my kitchen light. Thank you for putting my light bulbs in. No, the maintenance man didn't do it. Still, have not done it. Um, so, out of a, what, I don't know how much is in a stick. It's eight tablespoons I've used. Um, well, I cut it into four pieces, so I used about two for five tablespoons of butter roughly. I'm melting it in my pan because I want to make this a full pan. You're going to want, normally I use whole milk, but 2% does work. I got a ton of this from the food pantry. So yes, this is kind of a food pantry meal because the butter came from the food pantry probably two, three months ago um, or more and I keep it frozen so it stays good. And um, this I bought, it was like 68 cents. So this is always a good buy. And then you're going to want flour. You don't need a whole lot of flour. Um, and you're going to need, um, well, what did I just do with you? I just put you away. I'm using a wooden spoon because this is one of my new pans. Um, this is a ceramic pan, so I'm using... Wooden spoon, definitely. Now that this is kind of hot and you hear it sizzling, we're going to go ahead and I've got my salt and pepper also sitting right there. We're just going to add a bunch of flour and we're going to stir that in. This is about, well, this is a quarter of a cup and I've added probably close to half a cup of flour. I do want a thick paste. Because the thicker the paste, the more you're going to get. And I can add more flour. So definitely I've added probably close to half a cup or more. And the drier this part is, and the more you have of this, the more of the white sauce gravy you're going to get. And now this is what takes so long is adding milk, letting it thicken, adding milk, letting it thicken, because you do it tiny amounts at a time. And I need to turn it down because if you see your milk sizzling like that, your pan's probably a little too warm. And your milk is going to uh, like suck up into the flour really quickly at this point. You're just going to add. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. And you can. Let me just slide that out of the way. Just scooch it around in there. Let it suck up into the flour. And only add tiny amounts of milk at a time. 
that's how you keep from getting it lumpy. Now you can see it's almost formed into a ball. This is the stage where it really starts to turn into a sauce or a gravy. And this is where you really want to take and make sure that you're making sure it stays smooth. I know there's channels out there that would pause the video and go ahead and finish doing this but I want you to see from start to finish how exactly this is going to look how to just continually work it in because trust me the people that skip through steps and skip through showing you everything honestly Sometimes I look at the videos and I'm like, I'm missing something. Um, this doesn't look right. What am I missing? Um, is this how this is supposed to look? And, you know, you're watching three, four, five videos and seeing different versions and then putting them all together to come up with what may be correct. And, yes, you're going to slop if you're like me. And my hand is cramping. And there's people that are like, oh my God, that's a breakfast food. No, it's not. Um, I grew up as a kid having the plain. If you ever heard the songs, um, I heard it sung by uh, Grant Rogers, Gravy and Bread. Um, and it's, it's about white sauce gravy. It's a really good song. He's a Catskill folk singer. That's where I'm from. Let's switch hands for just a minute. Give that hand a little extra time to rest. And um, I've had it just plain. I've had it with uh, drained peas put in it. It's really good, actually. Um, I always thought when I was growing up, oh my gosh, this is wonderful, you know. Ma's making gravy and peas on toast. Us kids loved it. We never thought, you know... Mom's making gravy and peas on toast for a reason because we were at the, like, broke. There was no money. Food was low. And if you're seeing smoking, it's because um, I'm slopping. My hand is cramping probably because I'm a little low on, a little dehydrated. Um, dry beef, chip beef, um, sausage, hamburger, um, people made it with venison, uh, just about anything you want to put in this. Um, making this part, the roux part of it, um, you can add cheese to it, make it really thin and add cheese to it, um.
Once you have this part, you can do all kinds of different meals. You can see how much it's changed from the first step to here, and it's starting to look more like a thick paste, like wallpaper paste. My mother used to have to make two big pans of this. Of course, we were a family of six that, you know, we all had things we had to do in the winter, and that's usually when she made it. Cutting firewood, splitting firewood, you know, working in stone quarries. I'm no good at doing that left-handed. And it's basically you want to fold the milk, bring it into it, um, and do it slow. Keep your burner down. You don't want it too hot. And just keep working your milk in a little bit at a time. You don't want to add too much at a time because that's when you're going to get lumps. And that's when it doesn't want to thicken right either. And if you get done to the point where it doesn't want to thicken anymore, and you don't have enough, um, start a new pan. Because adding more flour to this, unless you don't care if you have a few lumps, um, adding more flour to this could be... It'll make it taste like flour and um, you'll get the lumps. You can add just a tad bit of, take and warm up some milk and add a little bit of cornstarch to it and then add it to it. Um, I know people do that, but I prefer not to. I've always just made a second pan if I don't have enough. Now at this point I'm going to start putting it into the center where the most of the heat is letting it warm up a little bit and then just working around. Now I know there's women out there that make it like with cream that say you have to use cream, that you have to use cornstarch, that you have to use this, you have to use that. Um, I know that there's newfangled recipes to make different things. I prefer the old fashioned way of making things because um, that's how I grew up making it, that's how my mother and grandmother made it and 
that's the way it tastes the best. And you see it's boiling. Slapped it on the floor. This is not something you want to stop and clean up any mess you make because this will burn. It will scald, and if that happens, it's going to have a burnt taste. So what I'm going to end up using is about a half a gallon of milk, five tablespoons of real butter, not the fake margarine or oil or none of that. You want real butter. Um, the reason for that is margarine has way too much water in it and oil. Um, it just isn't, it isn't good. It doesn't have a solid base of grease is what you want. Um, that's why a lot of people make it with hamburger or sausage or pork or something like that because the grease from that is the base to the roux. Um, and about a half a cup of flour to thicken it. And you see this is quite thick. I can still thin this down quite a bit. But you want to thin it slowly or you'll have uh, liquid like pouring milk out of the jug and a lot of times it is just letting it all come back up in temperature before you try stirring it in too much you don't want to cool it down too much with the cold milk I know I don't have an exact recipe. This is one of those things where you don't really have an exact recipe. As this cooks, it will also thicken. And when you go, if you have leftovers and you go to warm this up, it will also thicken. And you'll want to add a little bit of milk to it to thin it back out when you warm up your leftovers. So I will be taking this down quite thin because it will continue to thicken while I'm putting in the, the meat. This is the consistency I want when I put it on my toast. You can put it on biscuits. Um, I'm just not going to make biscuits. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit thinner. Like I said, it will thicken back up. Let that sit. Get this open. And I'm just going to take and tear this into chunks, kind of separate it and pour it into here. 
I'm going to turn this way down onto low and let it sit there on a slight simmer. And I may have to add a little more milk. Up. We're going to go ahead and add just a dash more milk. Not a whole lot. Oop, I'm making a really big mess because my kettle is getting quite full. And let that simmer. I'm going to go ahead and add some salt. Not a whole lot because that meat is salty. And then pepper. Give that a stir. Turn the burner back up and let it cook. So this is what it looks like. There's some of the meat. And it's actually pretty good. That's the right texture I want. I'm gonna go ahead, turn the burner off. I'm gonna make some toast and I'll be with you in a second. All right, everybody, here's my two slices of toast. And I've got my roux over here. I'm just going to bring it over here. Got my ladle. So this is I don't butter my toast. I know some people do. And it's just that simple, guys. I put plenty on there, so I have extra. And I really enjoy this type of a meal. It's nice. It's easy. Um, and it is just amazing. Um, I don't say it's a quick meal to make. But it is... Um, a very fulfilling meal when you need a good hot meal that's going to last in your tummy. So everyone, thank you for hanging out with me for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there really is no exact recipe. It is basically how much you want to make, um, how big of a pot you're making, and what you have on hand. Everyone, have a wonderful day. Bye guys.